Hi, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpit Queen. And I am uh, was to be in conversation today with my author friend, Pat Montadon. And this is her book. It's called Recipes for Conversation, a Guide to Hosting Authentic Conversations in the Digital Age and Pandemic. Now, Pat's not here. She lives in Beverly Hills. She's 92 years old. I asked her if she wanted to record it. She said, no, honey, I want to be live. So um, she's been called and we're hoping she'll jump on board. But just in case she hasn't, we don't want to waste any time. I'm going to tell you about Pat. Pat grew up in a little town in Oklahoma. And when she, in a family of Pentecostal preachers, her mother and her dad were uh, these, well, I say Pentecostal, but they were one of those country church type preachers and they preached together as a team. I don't know, there may have been snake handling, I'm not sure, but she had a lot of siblings. But when she turned 16, 15 or 16, she ran away from home. Her uncle um, encouraged her to, she was beautiful. And she went to Neiman and Marcus in Dallas by bus and she walked in and she got a job on the spot as a model. And she was modeling for them, uh, Nima Marcus, when her mama came and got her and took her back home. And she proceeded to marry somebody fairly wealthy in Oklahoma and she was given a convertible, um, big old convertible for a wedding gift, And but the marriage didn't last. And so she was determined that she was then of age, she was gonna go out to Cal California and make it big. So she went to San Francisco. And when she got to San Francisco, she rented, um, I, I think, it, I don't know if it was a townhouse or apartment, but you know, the Crooked Road in San Francisco that was, well, she got a place there and she immediately got a job with uh, Lord and Taylor. Uh, she was modeling and she's very social. And so she would meet interesting people of all walks of life and she would have parties. And she'd invite them all to come to her house. And she said, I had nothing. I put out crackers and tell everybody to bring something. I put it all out and people bring wine. And they became famous in San Francisco. And the next thing you knew, they offered her a television show. So she had this fabulous television show and she would have people on like Johnny Carson's wife and um, Dinah Shore, remember Dinah Shore? And all these celebrities talking about their lifestyle and home and and then for a while she dated Frank Sinatra uh, but she ended up uh, getting that her own television show and then she got a column in the San Francisco um, this was in the 60s uh, in the San Francisco Chronicle and I don't know if you've seen the film on Netflix called Tales of a City a uh, Tales of a City it starred Olivia Dukakis and Laura Lenny. It was done back in the 70s. And then they did a remake of it with all the same actresses in the not too long ago. That was based upon her life. Laura Lenny played her. And Pat started writing books, How to Host a Party. She did all these stories and books. And I'm trying to remember how I met her. She got a hold of me. But she had um, written a book, I know, it was Ping on Hot Coals, which is her memoir of growing up um, in Oklahoma. And she said at night they had an outhouse and she was scared to death to go to it and she'd have to pee. So there was a bucket on the porch. So she decided to pee in the bucket. And what she didn't know is they had put the coals from the fireplace in it. So when she peed in it, it steamed her and she was scalded bad. So for, uh, they called the doc, country doctor came and she spent, I think well over a month on her back with her legs being, it's just horrible, but she was disfigured. It's, it's a long story, but it's a, a tragic story, but it, it ended great because she, uh, ended up marrying the Butter King of California. And she they built this beautiful yellow house. They were philanthropists in San Francisco. And um, 
they had a son, gorgeous son, and then um, her best friend ended up running off with her husband. So she's been writing all these stories. And since then she's moved, she moved to Beverly Hills and I went out and saw her right before COVID uh, in October and stayed with her. And she just finished this book, she's 92. And if you haven't read any of her books, it's, they're just the most incredible thing. But when she was in Beverly Hills, uh, and I think even in San Francisco, she would have these, she ended up having these round table luncheons where she would have engraved invitations sent out to people, much like her early parties that she had in San Francisco. And she would invite celebrities. And I'm just going to um, read you the list of some of the people that she had at these round tables. In fact, I've become friends with one of her round table um, um, attendees who's, I don't know if any of you know Candy Clark, but she was up for the Academy Award in um, American Graffiti. She played the, the Dissy Blonde. And I met her through Pat Montadon. She's just an amazing person. She looks gorgeous to this day. But these are some of the people that she had at her round tables that she'd invite. Harvey Milk, you know, the American politician. And I'm skipping some of these because I didn't even know who they were. Um, Betty Friedan, who wrote the Feminine Mystique, founder of the National Organization for Women's National Women's Caucus and National Abortion Rights Action League. Abigail Van Buren, who wrote Dear Abby. Um, let's see, Alex Haley, author of Roots. Um, and I'm just... Uh, Sasheen Littlefeather, Native American who accepted an Oscar on behalf of Marlon Brando. Um, Agnes Moorhead, American actress. Um, it's just the, the Gloria Steinem, feminist, founder of Ms. Magazine. Daniel Steele, author. Shirley Temple Black, most popular child star in US history. The list just goes on and on from Anne Getty, the philanthropist and socialite. Uh, the list is amazing. She, in this book, she talks about what was important is having a conversation from people from all walks of life, all professions, sitting around. And the only way we can learn is by sharing our stories. And I, this is exactly what we do with the Pulp of Queens. We bring everybody in from all genres, all walks of life, both male and female. We share our stories with our readership and we all learn something and gain something from it that helps make us understanding, be more, have more empathy for people and um, more, um, understanding. In the book, she's got like Black Lives Matter. Uh, what Pat went on to do was she sold all of her furs and jewels that she had when she was married. And she took the money and she started this organization. It was Children for Peace. And so she would take children to meet world leaders of other countries and talk to them about the future of these children and why we are always at warring. She has met with every world leader when I was in her home. I'm watching, I'm looking at the silk banners in her house that were made to go on the Great Wall of China. When she met, she's met with all, her stories of when she went to Russia are absolutely, it's amazing that they all got out of there in one piece, but these, children that she brought into this have now all grown up and are all involved in social justice and activism and it's she was mentoring to the future of the world and she was nominated for the um nobel peace prize twice now the reason why i wanted to have her speak and i will still work on trying to do a recording of her and sharing it with all of you, is this is a woman who grew up in a very small place and she went on to become, she's very wealthy. I mean, where she, she lives like four blocks from the Beverly Hills Hotel. Um, my friend Heidi and I stayed in her Airbnb in her home and it's just 
I, I posted photos because nobody would ever believe it. Uh, but she is uh, one of these people that she always saw the positive in everything. And she never placed judgment with anybody. She just said, how can we have this conversation and make this world a better place? Can we all just think about these children? And it didn't matter what country she went to. When you, it reminds me of when Scout, and I'll tear up over this, when there was almost that lynching at the courthouse, when they had taken the, the black man to the courthouse and put him in jail and Atticus Finch set up with the lamp and the chair on the porch to, with the shotgun to protect him. And this mob shows up and they're gonna get him. They're gonna get him. And all of a sudden Scout, who's a child, comes out and starts talking to the people individually. And all of a sudden, from the voice of a child, people changed and she recognized that. And she's the only one left in her whole family. Um, and she's still working on doing all these things. And so she wrote this book. And uh, she's the author of five books, six plays, numerous poems, Oh, the Hell of It All by Harper Collins. Uh, it was published in 2008. She was dubbed San Francisco's golden girl by columnists and named one of the top hostesses in the United States. Um, she, uh, Pat launched a winning career in radio and television. She's the founder of the International Peace Foundation and has received the United Nations Peace Messenger Award and has been nominated for the Nobel Prize. And this really was not taken that long ago. I'm gonna show you a picture of her. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I change it to speaker view. Um, if you can, there we go. She's beautiful, a beautiful woman inside and out. And the wonderful thing about sharing this story with all of you is that because I be, was a reader and I started this book club with six complete strangers, I've had the opportunity to meet some amazing people in the world. Maybe somebody you've never heard about, but you should know about these people because, uh, you know, it's not, I'm very vocal about all that I do and I'm very outgoing and I've learned how to be that way. but. So many of you and many of you in my book club are not that way. Most book club members are real introverts. They don't like to ask questions. They don't wanna be on camera. So I feel like I kind of have started a program 22 years ago that helps showcase those who can't speak for themselves. And so when I, this is gonna be a Langyat book, which is a little extra. I've got a whole stack of books that I'm going to introduce probably after Girlfriend Weekend. These are not book club selections. They're just <laughs> because books. And I, I'm sorry that Pat is not here today um, because, but I will get her to you one way or another. That's my, she was in the hospital not too long ago and I don't know exactly the situation, but she's, she's doing fine and something could have happened. Anything could have happened. Her son is now a New York Times bestselling author. He came to Girlfriend Weekend, but the year Pat came, she was in her late 80s in Nacogdoches and she walked in the door and it was around the world with books. And she had, met, had this gown made that was a map and a hat made that had all of her books stacked up like this high. And she had a sash that said, you know, Pulpa Queen, Hairball Queen, whatever year it was. And everybody goes, well, she, you know, she wins. She wins. And she does win. And so um, even though she's not here, I just, if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Um, I've been in conversation with her so much through the years that I know a lot of things about her. If you don't have any questions, um, well, let me just open it up and see if anybody does. Just raise your hand and Mandy, I'm gonna go back to speaker view and see if there's anything you wanna ask me about, Pat. This is the chance you always take when you invite people to your thing. Some people 
you know, I, I hope I'm just praying that nothing happened to her, that she couldn't be here today. But um, one of her quotes is from Liz Smith. You all know who Liz Smith is. Pat Montadon has been having a ball ever since the age of seven when she entertained a group of chickens at a tea party in Warica, Oklahoma. She grew up to believe in a good time and in herself. She is also out to convert the heathen, the gloomsayers, the ones who think everything is too much trouble, the TV dinner crowd, the bot, bored, the boring, and the unromantic. She thinks the whole world should enjoy, enjoy, and she is out to show the way personally with a book and a fresh look at me, I'm dancing type of irresistible glee. And that's really, that encapsulates everything I believe in sharing our stories. People who are doing, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And that's what all of you are doing. Each one of your stories is, is, is sharing a perspective we haven't seen before. And it might be from our little corner of the world, or it might be, you know, Bellingham, Washington, or New York City, or Fernandina Beach, Florida, like Mandy, <laughs> or it could even be in Malta or France. Or Who has a question? Yes. Hey, Who has a question? I do. Okay, go ahead, Robert. So, Kathy, you said earlier that she was the inspiration for um, the character. Mary Ann Singleton from Tales of a City. Um, yes. By Armistead Maupin. Do you yes. know, does she have a friendship with Armistead? Yes, they were. She was a columnist with him and he was fascinated with her story. Of course, in the, in the show and in his, you know, his story, he had her coming from somewhere like Ohio, but she actually was from Warica, Oklahoma, which isn't too far from here. And a real small rural place. But I did not even know that until after I'd known Pat Montadon for years. And uh, when I asked her about it, because I watched it on Netflix, and I said, Pat, there's a story set in San Francisco. She goes, oh, honey, that's based upon me. And I thought she was joking, but she's not. They, they were both columnists with the San Francisco, and he was from South Carolina, I believe. And, um, but yeah, she knew, she knew all about that, yeah. Isn't that crazy? The connections of how stories bring us all together and how one story, you know, I, I, you know, everybody always talks about Kevin Bacon, six degrees of, you know, from Kevin Bacon. I think everybody's like six degrees from the Pulp of Queen Radiation. <laughs> I've connected to more people through my authors and through my Laura, readers. Laura has a question. Yeah, Laura. Kathy, I just wanted to thank you for introducing us to her. Wow. I mean, I, I read in the comments that her, well, her early story reminds me so much of my mother-in-law who passed away in 2020 at the age of 92, but she lived in the backwoods of Kentucky. She was, I mean, truly the Hatfields and McCoys. And my husband tells the story of how they drove up through these in their black Cadillac and these rutted roads over these creeks. And they got there, there was an outhouse. They were sitting on the front porch with their shotgun, <laughs> you know. And my mother-in-law, when she was 17, she ran away and she went to New York City and became a model. She was the first Maybelline model in 1944. Oh. Yeah, and she was this elegant woman and just, um, I mean, she passed away and we just went through all of her things and auctioned everything. Her things were so beautiful and she never did the humanitarian work that your friend did. But, but I just think about all these women who came from such humble beginnings and they, something compelled them to just break out and go. And she, my mother-in-law, she used to hang out with Frank Sinatra too at the Rat Pack in Miami. And, you know, it's just so interesting. And she never went to college. She wasn't educated. And yet she was just one of the most wonderful people I ever knew. She just, she just had, 
she was such a big person. You should write a book about that. Yeah, I'm just sitting here listening to this. And I would love to hear the rest of that story. Yeah, so I, but I'm just, I'm just so, it's so inspirational, these older women who, I mean, you're talking about older women today and a few panels ago, but, you know, I just, I just think there's so many wonderful, inspirational people out there for us to latch on to tell their stories. If you you saw her in person, uh, she's lovely, but she's very frail. You know, she's Mm -hmm. very frail. She looks, she still is a beauty, but she's very frail. And so, you know, I'm, I'm worried about her. And I, I just, she's one of the favorite people I've ever met. You know, she, I feel like she's just, you know, it was like Rue McClanahan. I got to meet her and hang out with her for a while. And she was lovely too. Um, You know, we can learn a lot. So no matter what anybody's age is, whether they're 20 or 92 we can all learn everybody has value everybody has a story um i went over with her about the time and i we talked at length about do you want to just tape it and then i could share the you know the youtube video on my channel with everybody and she goes no no honey i like to talk to people live so i'm hoping that there was a mistake but whatever happens if she's still available to do it, I will do it and I will share it with all of you that missed it today. But these are things that happen. And I used to just panic over these things, but I feel like everything's meant to, um, you know, you just got to roll with the flow and I'm just rolling with the flow. So I'm really uh, sorry about that. Uh, we do have, um, um, coming up tonight and i've double checked on this and he will be there uh we have vince spinato who is a chemist a beauty insider he's was a pick last year for my pursuit of beauty and he just um he does celebrity he does three types of beauty lines um he does he does all the shampoos for fairfieldians then he does celebrities and then he creates these one of a kind he created a line of beauty products for the women of dubai called caviar and diamonds it sells for the skin care for one month is a thousand dollars um it blows my mind and when you hear where he came from um and he dropped out of school and drove to california and talked himself into the biggest cosmetic company that was going at that time um, into being learning the business and he learned it from the ground up and um, he ended up now he's he travels the world uh, developing and he wrote a book about it and it's the craziest thing I've ever read in my life he he's got a documentary coming out and he just sold um um uh, In fact, he's going to be on Entertainment Weekly coming right up with the family of Judy Garland for her 100th anniversary. He is doing the fragrance called Judy. So uh, seven o'clock tonight. And then we're going to end early because we've got two big nights of with our masquerade ball and then our awards ceremony. And plus all throughout the day, all our panels. So um, I'm sorry that she could not be here. And but you will view her she's on facebook she's you google her just google and it's spelled m uh o n t a n d o n and she is amazing pat montadon recipes for conversation so any other questions do we have any mandy no All right. Well, I guess we'll end it for now and we'll see you back at seven o'clock. And I'm really excited about tonight and the rest of the weekend because we're really now just starting Girlfriend Weekend. What we usually have, all this other book club convention was all just trying to help authors get, you know, some visual uh, time out in the world in a time of COVID pandemic. So, Uh, Thank you all very much, and we'll continue our stories, and um, uh, 
I guess that's it. Any any housekeeping, Mandy, we need to share with anybody? No, uh -uh. just um, okay. see, see you at the next one. Okay, we'll see you tonight. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.